Welcome to the First Unitarian Universalist Church of Rochester. For more than 150 years, ours has been a congregation of open minds and loving hearts, celebrating many sources of wisdom and many spiritual paths. Your faith, your doubts, your questions, your hopes for our world and your story are welcome here. And our doors are closed because our hearts are open, living our values of care and compassion. Special thanks for today's online service to guest musicians Y Blue, including Rose Mish, Andy Hansen, Kenneth Miller, and Will DeBlay. Thank you for your music today. And a welcome to the Reverend Ruth McKenzie, lighting our chalice with a reflection today. Ruth will be our guest preacher for a two-Sunday series in January, as well as a presenter for a couple of forums as well during that time. Welcome, Ruth, for this brief introduction to the congregation, and we look forward to you bringing more good words to us in January. And we're so glad to welcome new members today who joined virtually on Zoom recently after an online class. A special welcome to them, and for those who can join us at the coffee hour today, we'll give them a live welcome at that time too. So join us at 1015 today for online coffee hour. And our offering today will be split evenly to support our virtual giving tree recipients with additional money to supplement their needs for the season beyond donated goods. Thank you for your generosity. You can find out more at uurochmn.org slash give. And this week is, of course, filled with opportunities, starting with an online or a, um, a drive through event today at 4 o'clock in the lower parking lot here at the church. You can come through for a wonderful light display, distanced carolers. You can bring donations for the giving tree and guests at your table boxes and receive a very special home for the holidays gift bag with a 2020 ornament, candles for Christmas Eve and more. So the lights will stay lit in the parking lot each evening through New Year's. So you can come through this Sunday, or this afternoon and throughout this coming week as well. So come today, drive through all week. We hope to see you at 4 o'clock today. And then join us for online services this week, Monday at 7 o'clock for a contemplative winter solstice service, 4 o'clock on Christmas Eve for a service of traditional and modern carols and readings with a few fun surprises and a live story time at 5.30 on Zoom following the service. Bring some treats and a candle for some few, a few moments of fun together. The services are available anytime after that as well, so please join us this week as we celebrate the holidays of this season. And finally, in the words of the Reverend Eliza Tupper Wilkes, minister of this church in the 1870s, may our faith in humanity and our message of hope and good cheer light our way. It's good to be together. Good morning, everyone. It is so good to be with you this morning. And I look forward to worshiping with you after the first of the year. In these groundhog days of waking up every morning to the sameness of it all, to the locked down and the locked in, to family life on steroids, to way too close, to way too far away, to a way and weight of the days stretching out in mind-numbing resemblance. Stillness is everywhere and nowhere. The streets are still, the classrooms are still, work and school in a 900 square foot apartment is definitely not still. Dinners alone or dinners with kids who've spent way too much time on Zoom feel disjointed, surreal, and not still. And of course, then there is my mind I don't know about you, but the distractions that keep me distracted, but don't seem to help. The divisions that keep me divided from my heart. The dis-ease and the disharmony that has laid its claim on me. 
and keep me from my wholeness, my tenderness. But sometimes, just sometimes, I, I take in a magnificent pink sky above me as I bend to pick up the paper. Sometimes, just sometimes, I sense the hidden life buried deep in the fur of my beloved dog. Sometimes, sometimes I'm stopped in my tracks by a text and I am stilled by the power of friendship. Sometimes, just sometimes, I understand stillness as something more than calm. I understand stillness as connection. It's as if my lungs open up wide and I take in a deep breath of the world and the world takes in a full deep breath of me and everything around us shimmers. May this hour together be one of stillness, a time of calm and connection with your heart and with the heart of this community. And may this hour, as poet Jan Richardson writes, be one in which you are opened into the quiet that lies beneath the chaos, where you find peace you did not think possible and see what shimmers within the storm. Come, let us worship together.
2009, I was still emerging from the losses of my husband and my mother and was learning how to be retired. The myriad balls I had been juggling and the sadness I'd been experiencing relentlessly for four years to the exclusion of everything else were easing, but I was adrift with free-floating stress. A nun whom I adore was going to be leading a silent retreat at a center in rural Massachusetts. So I decided I needed to go to clear my head and see if I could begin to refocus my life. After a literal litany of planes, trains, and automobiles, I arrived at my haven for the next 48 hours. As an introvert, I am fine with quiet, but it was disquieting to sit with people at meals and not say a word. This tormented me until Saturday dinner when I realized that the silence was good and companionable. For the first time in ages, I felt my stomach unknot. I loved the routine and the fact that everyone was silent, so there was no ambient chatter or cell phone pinging, just the birds and the critters in the woodlot. And there was no pressure to talk. I was sorry to have it end, but I learned that silence and stillness are necessary for hearing. As I once was told while canoeing in the Boundary Waters, you can't hear the loons if you're talking, Trish. Point taken. When I lived on the farm in Wabasha County 20 years ago, there was a lot of silence, stillness, and reflection. Only two television stations and sketchy dial-up internet limited mindless entertainment, and I reveled in the tranquility. It's not that there weren't dozens of chores and commitments, but the natural world imposed limitations and opportunities that are less apparent in an urban or suburban environment. A haiku I wrote then for a cold winter solstice night. Midnight stargazing, planes crisscross the galaxy, fly over country. In this time of pandemic, at least in my privileged situation, there has been an anxiety-producing type of forced stillness, as much of the normal busyness of my life has been put on hold. As one who rails against the dying of the light each fall as the days shorten, and I find my gym closed this year, I've made it a point to go sit each morning by our east-facing living room window, overlooking the pond and absorb all the light and quiet I can. I'm embracing the rest the Sabbath time, which is so countercultural in our society. Seeking rest pushes hard against our perceived need to be productive and busy, busy, busy. Gotta check everything off that to-do list, you know. Using silence solely as an escape can be dangerous, but is necessary for gathering strength and focus. I understand that better now and am comfortable enough to embrace it. As 17th century philosopher and mathematician Blaise Pascal wrote, all of humanity's problems stem from our inability to sit quietly in a room alone. I wonder what he'd write today. If I never make it through the winter I'd be sorry not to see your face again. The cruelest winds will blow, clouds lay upon us snow, and I'll be buried here forever. If I ever make it to the morning, I would only like to feel your hand in mine. If the sun ever melts my frozen heart, I promise to hold you close forever. With blood in my veins turns to ice.
when I call for you in the night, an echo is the only reply. Have faith that the storm will blow itself out. I have to believe it somehow. As I wait for the sun to break free from the clouds above, the only one. Our December theme, Stillness, is a great reminder to all of us to just sit back and enjoy the little things. Today's story, I Am Peace, a book about mindfulness, is a reminder that sometimes we just need to get some solid ground underneath us in order to allow our minds to be still. I Am Peace, a book of mindfulness by Susan Verde, art by Peter H. Reynolds. There are times when I worry about what might happen next and what happened before. The thoughts in my head are like rushing water and I feel like a boat with no anchor and that I am being carried away. I give myself a moment. I take a breath and then I tell myself it's all right. I feel the ground beneath my feet and try to steady myself. And I start to notice the here and the now. My thoughts begin to settle. My mind begins to clear. I am peace. I can watch my worries gently pop and disappear. I let things go. I can say what I feel inside out loud. I know myself. I can share kindness with others. I make a difference. I can hug a tree and thank it for its beauty and its strength. I can connect to nature. I can watch the clouds make shapes against the sky. I know wonder. I can taste and smell and touch and hear and see what is all around me. I use my senses. I feel my breath fill my whole body. I tune into me. Now the water is still. I have found my anchor and everything is all right. I don't need to worry about before or after. 
I am in this moment. I am peace. And I can share my peace with others and hope that it is carried away to those who need it most. And I dream we are peace. I really like that analogy of, of planting a seed and hugging a tree and just taking the opportunity to pass peacefulness and that solid ground underneath us onto other people. Because really, isn't that one of the biggest wishes for this time of year? Peace for everyone. Normally this time of year, the Sunday before the holidays, we'd have a festive service with the children's choir leading lots of festive songs. And it's always messy and there's normally a ridiculous staff band with hats like this. Sometimes they accidentally grab the kid size one when they come to record, but whatever, it's fun. It's ridiculous anyway. So this year it's a little messy too, but we want our children's choir to know we love you and we miss you and we will be excited when we can be back in here. But for now, here's a little festivity. Sing along with the children's choir from homes scattered across town in Jingle Bells. <laughs> jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun is it to ride in a one-horse open sleigh? Hey! Dashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh. All the fields we go, laughing all the way. Oh, oh. Bells on bobtails ring, making spirits shine. Welcome new members in normal times here in the sanctuary. It's a seemingly simple act, putting pen to paper, saying a name, saying welcome, and yet and still something more powerful than that happens, even when and maybe especially when we're so distanced as we are now. It's a commitment of hearts to hearts. It's of joining a community and re-consecrating our values of who we are and who we are called to be. It's naming and honoring new souls among us in the larger family of all souls. So I'm looking down at the screen of these new members who are joined here in the sanctuary as you see them. Know that this church is a home for your soul. Know that these are your people here in spirit across time and distance. And together in forgiveness and in grace, in strength and resilience, we will make a home here for all souls, for your soul. So as I will pan out and show the pictures on the, on the chairs that are still here in our sanctuary, Melissa will speak on behalf of the congregation in welcoming these new members. Thank you. We welcome you into this congregation and into the larger circle of Unitarian Universalism. We welcome your story, your identity and the gifts that you bring. May you find here a home for your soul. We, we gladly join as members of this church. Members of this church. We, offer, we, will offer, we will offer our gifts as we are able, as we are able, able to, to the flourishing, flourishing and well-being of, well of this community, community. And, support the values and, and support the values of this congregation. Of this congregation. 
hospitality, compassion, spiritual growth, and justice. And all of us together. We covenant to travel together, travel together in this religious, religious community. Religious community. Yeah. Here may be yeah. 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 for who we are, who we are. Oh, and challenge to be our best, be our best, best self. self. May we Here up. may we Here grow, may our, we grow souls. our souls, yeah. care for each yeah. other, yeah. For each other. Yeah. Yeah. Nurture, spiritual nurture, nurture, nurture yeah. spiritual yeah. growth, yeah. Practice, yeah. Justice. practice justice, yeah. and together, yeah. together, and together yeah. lead lives yeah. of lives and meaning and service, and, service. And, service. And, love. service. and love. Now, it's always a bit messy, and especially on Zoom, as we strain to pay attention to each other. And if we're honest, that's what church always is. Straining to pay attention and to hear each other's voice and to know each other's soul. So we bid them welcome. And they will someday, or maybe by mail for now, or homing pigeon or whatever, hmm. sign this book, this record book, holding over 150 names of people who have committed their hearts to this congregation, to where it is today. And so to these new members, right now, electronically, and in the future, in this space, and from across the distance where we gather, we bid you welcome. May you find here a home for your soul. Amen. <laughs> share a heartfelt welcome to all of the new members of First Unitarian Universalist Church. We are thrilled to have you as a beloved part of our church family. And we are still separated by space and time, but look forward as we see a light in the future and we look forward to being together again. For now, we gather in this virtual way as we continue to create a place of communal caring and connection. Be enriched by the virtual presence of each other and draw yourself closer into the heart of love at this time of service and reflection. In this time together, we ask that our minds be open, our hearts welcoming and our arms embracing. We honor all who support us in this caring, loving and all-inclusive ministry. We send gratitude to Ella Van Lanningham, serving as our caring coordinator for the last two weeks, arranging care for our members and friends in need. Vicki Wolf will take over tomorrow for the next two, and we thank her for that. The members of our caring committee are wonderful examples of our compassionate community, holding us up as we go through challenging and happy times. And during this time of increasing needs in our lives and community, we, need, we encourage you to reach out for support and help if you are experiencing hardship. Many of us may need additional care, whether it be pastoral care, grocery delivery or an errand run, and we encourage you to reach out to Reverend Luke or myself with that request. We thank all of you who have served our congregation in this way over these last several months. Today's flowers are shared by Lisa Gabrielson in honor of her grandfather, Philip Olivetto, who passed away on Monday. In this community, we make time each week to share pieces of our lives with one another we do this because each person here has a value. Each person's experience matters. We lift up those whose lives are touched by sadness, by illness, by worry, or by loneliness. We revel in those who are celebrating joys in their lives. May their happiness lift us all. May all of us find comfort, hope, joy, and healing strength in this community. 
We hold Carmen Frana and her family in our hearts as she shares the news that her mother, Karen Bayer, 72 years old, who had been living with Alzheimer's for five years, passed away peacefully on Monday morning after having been diagnosed with COVID-19 last week. Carmen said she was an amazing mother, grandmother, wife, sister, aunt, and friend. She will be greatly missed and always held lovingly in our hearts. We are grateful that Karen's loving husband was by her side, and we send love and strength to the family and all who knew her. Our thoughts are with Lisa Gabrielson as well. Lisa's grandfather, Philip Oliveto, 86, of Rochester, Minnesota, was admitted to the ICU on Monday, where he passed shortly after due to COVID-19. While his doctors at Mayo shared it was the worst case they've seen thus far, there were blessings in his passing in that he didn't have to suffer for a prolonged time and that Lisa's grandmother, Ronnie Oliveto, was able to be at his side when God called him home. Grandma Ronnie herself was recently hospitalized with COVID as well and is still recovering. And during this time, we send support to Lisa and her family. We continue our loving thoughts this morning for Ray Phelps Bowman, Ray's sister, Kathy Godey, 74 years old of Carrollton, Illinois, died in hospice care in St. Louis, Missouri. She was the oldest of his four sisters and passed away as a result of multiple health problems. And at this tender time of grieving, we hold Ray and all who knew Kathy in our embrace. Joe Lobel underwent surgery last Friday, December 11th, for prostate cancer. He is home, recovering, and doing well. The good news is that the cancer seemed to be contained, so he is hopeful that the surgery will be a cure. Joe and Robin have no immediate needs, but would welcome cards of support, and we send them love and healing vibes. And I'm happy to share congratulations to Kit Jester on his graduation from Augusta University with a major in psychology, minor in general studies focused on neurologic and holistic health, and a certificate of cultural diversity in healthcare. Kit, may you go forward and bring help and healing to our world. Congratulations. As we have over these last few months, we need to continue to reach out to all of those around us to let them know we are still here and still holding them. Cards and phone calls can help lift up those you love Donations to our local food assistance programs can help to ensure that families have a warm holiday meal. We encourage you all to support local communities and businesses and reach out to those in need. May the faith of the spirit of life, love for the community of earth and love for the light in each other be ours now and in all the days to come. And I wish you a happy holiday. I invite you to take a deep breath, breathe deep the breath of life. Breathe deeply in this time of welcome and grace and hope. Here in this house, may you know that you are named and known as beloved, as sacred, as welcome. Feel below you the earth with its ancient turning and above you the sky and above that, the stars with their ancient light holding you here now. Find your breath, center down. I invite you into this time of meditation and prayer, first by sharing silence together. Spirit of life and source of love, God of a thousand names and beyond all naming. While, of course, we are missing tangible things these days of places to gather and to go, food or gifts to share, coffee and treats in the commons, tears or embraces with loved ones, we know it is those tangible things that serve as a reminder of the intangible things that we truly need, love, care, belonging. May we know in our bones 
in ways reimagined and suspended across space that love travels to meet us where we are, intangible as it may feel. Help us remember and find the reminders which we will need again and reminders of things that cannot be taken away that we are beloved and sacred, those things built and held in the intangibility of things like love and the soul. We hold in our hearts all those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, and I invite you to bring the names you're holding this day to this hour together and silently or aloud now wherever you are to speak their names. For all those names, spoken, unspoken, may we all be held in love and grace. And we send love and grace to the family of member Ron Chrisop. Ron died this past week. He was a graceful, matter-of-fact, light-hearted, hopeful spirit, never dwelling in gloom, always finding gratitude in the midst of pain. We send love to his wife, Bonnie, and their family in their grief, and we remember him fondly and with love. In the rising of the sun and in its going down, we will remember him. Finally, these words of meditation come from Raymond Carver, who writes, And did you get what you wanted from this life even so? I did. And what did you want? To call myself beloved. To feel myself beloved on this earth. Amen. again as in olden days happy golden days of your faithful friends who are dear to us will be near to us once more someday soon The fates allow Until then We'll have to muddle through Somehow So have yourself A merry little Christmas
from Amy Krause Rosenthal, entitled Busy. Busy. How have you been? Busy. How's work? Busy. How was your week? Good. Busy. You name the question, busy is the answer. Yes, yes, I know we are all terribly busy doing terribly important things. But I think more often than not, busy is simply the most acceptable knee-jerk response. Certainly, there are more interesting, more original, and more accurate ways to answer the question, how are you? How about, I'm hungry for a waffle. I'm envious of my best friend. I'm annoyed by everything that's broken in my house. I'm itchy. Yet busy stands as the easiest way of summarizing all that you do and all that you are. I am busy is the short way of saying, suggesting, my time is filled. My phone does not stop ringing, and therefore, you should think well of me. Have people always been this busy? Did cavemen think they were busy too? This week is wild. I've got about 10 caves to draw on. Can I meet you by the fire next week? As kids, our stock answer to most every question was nothing. What did you do at school today? Nothing. What's new? Nothing. Then somewhere on the way to adulthood, we each took a 180 degree turn. We cashed in our nothing for busy. I'm starting to think that like youth, the word nothing is wasted on the young. Maybe we should try reintroducing it into our grown up vernacular, nothing. I say it a few times and I can feel myself becoming more quiet, decaffeinated, nothing. Now I'm picturing emptiness, a white blanket, a couple ducks gliding on a still pond. Nothing, nothing, nothing. How did we get so far from it? Our second reading is from Michael Lunig. God help us to live slowly, to move simply, to look softly, to allow emptiness, to let the heart create for us. This is my winter song to you. The storm is coming soon. It rolls in from the sea. My voice a beacon in the night. My words will be your light to carry you to me. Is love alive? Is love alive? Is love alive? They say that things just cannot grow beneath the winter snow or so i have been told they say that they were buried far just like a distant star i simply cannot hold is love alive is love alive
Did you get what you wanted? A child might be asked after gifts are opened for whatever occasion. There's a scene from a holiday movie where a parent asks that. So did you get everything you wanted? And the little kid says, almost. And the parent replies, almost. Yep, that's how things usually go. Maybe you're feeling like that this year, maybe every year, a year of almost. You almost got what you wanted or hoped for or dreamed for. Maybe, maybe actually this year is a, not even close, not even close. Or when you're asked for another sermon topic and you're really not sure what else you have to say, you simply say, I've got nothing. So how's that for a sermon title? <laughs> Sometimes the things that we actually want or actually need are impossible right now or even in non-pandemic times because of distance or because of loss. Sometimes, perhaps often in this culture, we turn to a mindset, if I could just get or just have then, if then, I would be happy, or I'd be content, or I'd be joyful. Because underneath every gift, those tangible things were missing. Beneath the paper and the tissue, of course, that's where the actual meaning lies under the surface. Meaning that someone cares for us. You have to pay attention to those things under the layers that you can't see to feel what it's actually about, that there's love there. There's care and intention. Did you get what you want? Asked the poet. Did you get what you wanted? We have a unique relationship in this society that puts profit over people. A type of consumeristic capitalism that shows its inetness to care for people in the most basic ways in the midst of a pandemic really highlights that point where people literally have to choose to risk their health, to risk their life, to be able to keep housing and food and safety because the bootstraps they're supposed to be lifting themselves up by may or may not be filled with illness and there's not enough safety net to help people navigate how to still pay the bills that keep coming, how to find a way to not risk their life and risk their livelihood. This type of society tends to leave a hole in emptiness that we are taught to fill with things and taught to fill our lives with being busy. Busy is what we often respond to. It's not a lie often, it's actually true that we are busy. And as so many of my colleagues right now around the country and so many others in a thousand other jobs or contexts or families keep on saying in the midst of questions about full-time work and childcare and distance learning that this is actually impossible. This is all impossible. We have a system that was not set up to hold this and it isn't holding in so many ways. We're not just busy, we're fragmented and frayed as people and communities beyond what seems possible. And the lasting impact of not only the virus, but the pressure of these days on the soul for some is yet to be known. We cashed in our nothing for busy, writes the poet, Trish read for us. And so here we are in this year that has twisted the calendar beyond recognition of everything canceled and for some a numbing isolation and for others a frenetic noise of questions of how to hold it together, to allow emptiness in the words of the other poet. A few years back, in the week of my interviews here, to eventually become your minister, a packed full week of things, I took a drive 
when there was a little opening in the schedule. I took a drive out near Lanesboro. Between committee meetings and potlucks and social times, all of them really quite lovely and lively, it's hard to remember being in such close proximity to each other during those days. A lovely thing we'll return to. So I took some time in the emptiness of the schedule to visit the church that my grandfather had served as pastor, North Prairie Lutheran, near Wayland and Peterson. There, alongside of the church on this country road out amidst the farm fields, there was a graveyard, and I saw names of distant relatives, but mostly what I noticed was on the other side of the church, this large open field, which seemed almost like watercolors as simply being an extension of the sky, blending together open sky, open field. I remember that being a space that reminded me, told me, taught me a little bit, about the ethos, the personality of my grandpa and grandma and family. And the space there, in the calendar and in the field and the sky, the empty space allowed an openness for breath within me, a place with memory and gratitude and uncertainty of the future could land, a space to make in the midst of busyness for emptiness a nothingness of time and space that held so much. Wanting nothing, what a gift that could be, like a blank canvas or like a swept threshold. Instead of filling up our emptiness, the type of emptiness that a cold and callous economics may leave us with, perhaps there is a returning needed in this month's theme of stillness like the wisdom of the solstice that helps us dwell in the beauty of darkness, the depth of how living things come to life safely in the dark of night, the dark of the womb of imagination, those places that light would be too harsh for. There is a gift in nothingness, not of complete absence, but a type of nothingness of simplicity, that doesn't try to cram our soul full of things that we don't need, that doesn't try to fill us up with unhealthy expectations for ourselves and others, that doesn't demand of us something we're just not able to do, whatever it is. Perhaps the gift of nothingness is that it doesn't clutter our lives with distraction so that we can notice, perhaps remember, what we really want, what we actually need, the gifts that are the true gifts in this life, this world, to name clearly the things we need to flourish, the things our soul longs for, that we all need. Basic things like food and shelter and health care and safety. Maybe it's an invitation for us to name our daily needs with loved ones in our home or far distance from us, like the author writes, if we really need a waffle or if we're feeling itchy, to be honest about what we need and what is hard and what we're holding, not what we're told we should want or how we should feel, so that we get the care, the support, the resources that we need. What we need, really, is life. Life in its best sense for ourselves, for the oppressed, for all of us collectively. What we really need cannot be boxed or bagged or wrapped, cannot be held within the calendar or the busyness that we think or are told we ought to have. What we want, what we need, the gifts we need live within our collective will to build and create and sustain a world that is just that is compassionate, that is loving, that is accepting, that has enough freedom, actual freedom, for the soul to breathe. And in that type of world, then we are called, ourselves and everyone, we're called beloved. 
then that is the gift we need to awaken to each and every day. Maybe then we can answer, and did you get what you wanted in this life after all? To be called beloved, to feel beloved on the earth. That's the gift that we all need. is to be honest with each other and truthful about what we need from each other for life and for love and for compassion and for our shared survival and flourishing. Whether that be someone to hold our grief with us, whether that be putting on a silly hat and singing jingle bells in the living room, whatever it is, may you find enough light so that you feel on this earth, you are beloved, and that you are a gift. Amen. <laughs>